a trip recently to Prince Edward Island, and I went to this, right? Um, I went to this incredible thing they have there, which are called bottle houses. And they're these beautiful houses, and they're made entirely of recycled bottles. And I went to the clerk to buy my ticket, and she looked at me and she said, you came here alone? All by yourself? And I was like, yep. And she was like, so you're just driving around all by yourself, totally alone. Isn't that scary? And I was like, nope, I'm good. To this woman, traveling alone was the most terrifying thing she could possibly imagine. And to so many people, it's the most terrifying thing they could possibly imagine. So many people, the idea of traveling alone is something that like, maybe they'll get up the courage to try one day when they're like 55 and own a lot of sun hats, which I'm not judging, I own a lot of sun hats as well. So, but it's this sort of like far off thing when you get the guts up. Um, for me, I love traveling alone, and while most people have never done it, I've actually only ever traveled alone, uh, which I feel like I should explain. As a little kid, I had to raise myself um, and be my own parent and protector and kind of everything, which I know when I say that, it sounds really scary. It was incredibly scary. I don't love talking about it. I will not go into further details. <laughs> but it was as scary as you imagine, and then maybe times like 25. But because of that, I think I've lived a life that's kind of backwards. Most people, their goal is to be more independent. And I was forced to be the most independent for my entire life, to the point where I actually really romanticized the idea of being dependent on someone. Like, <laughs> what? So you have a person in your life who you just like trust with all of your feelings and emotions, and you know they're gonna come through for you every time? That sounds amazing. I have no idea what it feels like but it sounds very cool. But the thing is, if you want to have you know, a love relationship or friendships or things like that, all these connections, we're told that having that loving relationship and receiving that unconditional love as a child is crucial to that. So if you didn't receive that as a kid, are you gonna be alone forever? Because if you didn't receive that love, you have no idea what that's like, so you can't attract it, you wouldn't even really know what it looked like if you saw it. And then if you get really lucky and somebody offers it to you, you won't take it because you don't think you deserve it. So if you can't attract it, you don't think you deserve it, what happens to you? You'll end up alone. Which is a very powerful fear that so many of us have, whether that was your childhood or not. And that fear is such a powerful motivator. It motivates us to do things like download 30 different dating apps and swipe consistently, even though that has literally never gone well for us, not even once. That example might be about me personally, who can know? Um, it is. Um, it could motivate us to go out every Friday night and be social, even though we know we have more fun at home. We know that. But because we want that connection so desperately, and we're told that it's our job as people to be super vigilant in attaining it, we're told that, like, we can't stay home tonight. What if we miss this birthday party? And that was the night that a friendship deepened or formed. We can't skip going out every Friday night because what if that was the night we met our soulmate and we missed it? What if we take one more trip home to see our family and this time, this time they get it and they acknowledge it and they apologize and this time you feel loved. But even if you bury your desire for that connection, Life will make you face it. When you go to the doctor's office and you have to fill out all those terrible forms that are my living nightmare, and there is that blank on there, emergency contact. And in that moment, you have to think, who would I call if I were dying? And if the answer is no one, and you try to just leave it off, and you don't, you're not gonna put it in, you're gonna turn in your papers without it, that nurse will know and she will send it back to you and go, there's no one on here. And you'll go, yeah, I don't have anybody. And she'll say, but you have to put someone on there. And you might say, I know, I don't have anyone, okay? And you'll cry and she'll look at you and you'll be too sad and too alone. If you want any kind of guaranteed tips that you will have had to like never be alone ever in your lifetime, I cannot give them to you. <laughs> Um, and if anybody says they can give those to you, they're absolutely lying. 
Um, because tragically, nothing in life is guaranteed. Even if you find your perfect soulmate, even if you find them, people leave, people cheat, people die. Even if you find your dream friends, friends move, friends change, friends disappoint you so very much. Because nothing is guaranteed, it can be very easy to start to think, well, okay, if there's no guarantee at all, then I'm just gonna stop getting close to people because if I don't ever get close to people, then I can never get hurt. Which, by the way, super valid. Let's work with that. So, <laughs> in my life, I have had incredible stranger luck. And stranger luck is a term uh, I think I invented. Um, I don't want to fully claim it in case someone's like, in 1992, I don't know. But that's what I call it. Um, <laughs> um, don't at me. Um, Stranger luck is when a group of strangers love you more and just so immediately you meet them and they just feel like family and they're able to love you and accept you more than your actual family was able to do. I was on a vacation recently and I met these three women and they were so incredible and we bonded so immediately and they immediately loved me and immediately just thought I was wonderful and when I told them that I don't really have any family, they offered to be mine. And, um, oh, thanks. <laughs> um, I've actually um, had this happen many times in my life where absolute strangers immediately saw my specialness and my deserving of unconditional love and wanted to be my family. And every time it happens, it is incredibly confusing. Because why is it that a group of total strangers who just met me immediately love me, immediately see me as valuable and worthy, when the people most likely to have loved me did not? It can be so difficult to accept love and care when it comes in a package you did not expect at all, especially after spending a lifetime expecting it to look the way you always dreamed it would. It's a little bit like a more depressing version of expecting Coke and getting Pepsi. <laughs> it's not bad, it's just disorienting. <laughs> but what if not having the family or the friends or the partner that you were supposed to have, what if not having all of those things actually makes you more able to connect with everyone around you all the time. Because if you couldn't find love and connection in the places most likely, maybe you could find it in the places least likely. Whew. We're told that in order to be enough, our family has to think we're enough. Our friends have to think we're enough. Our partner has to say that we're enough. But what if we're worth loving because we think we're enough? <laughs> that said, it is not easy to do <laughs> at all. Um, I am working every single day with everything I have to believe on a cellular level that I am worthy of love and care, even if the people who should have loved me don't. Because they might never. And maybe by admitting this really terrifying thing to admit to a whole bunch of strangers and even to myself, maybe by admitting this terrifying thing, maybe there is somebody else out there who is hearing this who also carries that very large weight and shame and fear with them and has never heard anyone else say it out loud. And maybe by expressing this incredibly difficult thing, I am now connected to that person and they are now connected to me. Being alone is not a life sentence. I know it can feel like that all the time, but I promise you, you will not be alone for your entire life. And even if you are, <laughs> because I'm starting to feel that maybe on some level, I'll kind of be alone for most of my life, in some way. But even if that's true, okay. What happiness can be found there anyway? 
One of my favorite ways to connect with people that I highly recommend is simply by reaching out. I know that it is our base nature to work together, to be together, to help each other, and that is only broken when we have tried to help somebody or done something to reach out and we were hurt and you shut it down and you don't wanna do it anymore. But I know it's still there when people smile at you on the street for no reason at all, or hold the door, or you're walking your dog and someone comes up to you and you talk for like 20 minutes and you walk away with a skip in your step because wow, connection really is possible everywhere, all the time. I would say above all else, be the person you want to see in the world. Be the person you wish existed. Just <laughs> be the person who cares too much. Be the person who makes a difference. Be the person who smiled at someone on the street, even when they might not smile back. Be the person who holds that door, even though you might not get a thank you. And by that way, you are connected to somebody just because you reached out. One of the best things about being alone for most of my life is that as long as I am alive, I wanna make sure that nobody else ever feels alone. As long as I am alive and breathing, I wanna be that person who tells that woman in the park that she looks really beautiful today. I wanna to be the person who sees that person crying on the train and tells them I see them and it'll be okay, even if I absolutely can't guarantee that. I wanna tell all of my friends that I think they are special and incredible and so deserving of love and that I will be there for them forever, infinitely even when I'm not entirely sure they'll always be there for me. I still have fears that I will not find the love or the soulmate that I've always dreamed of, still dream of sometimes, or that I will never belong in the way I've always wanted to. I hope that I do, but it can be really hard to believe in. The more you get hurt, but if none of those things happen in the end, well, what is left? And the only answer that I have is that I am. I am still here. I am still alive. And there is still time for things to change. Thank you.